This video will present how to solve the worst case scenarios for your TX16S radio. For example, when your radio is bricked or even when the DFU mode is not working. In such cases, the problem may be software or hardware. So, let's start to present how to solve the software problems. In order for your station to work, at least three components must work together. The bootloader, that is the software component used to load the operating system, the firmware, that is the station operating system, in this case the OpenTX, and some specific information stored on your SD card must exist and be correct. So, why is the information stored on the SD card so important? The TX16S does not have an internal EEPROM memory, so all the settings for your station are kept on the SD card. On the SD card you have two folders, radio and models. In the radio folder, on this binary file, all the settings of your station are preserved. If this file is corrupted, your receiver will behave awkwardly. All the specific settings for your models are saved in the model folder. Now let's make a new SD card. My advice is to use a different SD card. I know your SD card is brand new and it can be bad, but it can. Trust me. In time, I've seen everything, and from my experience, the SD cards go bad more than any other memory storage. So, let's take the SD card, put it in the SD card reader, and I'll connect it to the PC. And now, you'll get a pop-up window. The SD card must be formatted with FAT32 In the meantime, I will download the official SD card content I will select the software version for my station And from here, I will download the SD card content for my station. Let's say I will take the last version. Okay, it will take some time. Now copy all of these folders to SD card After a while the copy operation finished If you have a backup of the SD card like in my case You can restore only the radio and uh, the models folders or you can use the companion app application to do the same for the last approach you have a link in the upper part of the video that was all now insert the new SD card into your station and see if the problem was solved the DFU mode meaning device firmware upgrade, is an official USB device class specification that provides an independent way of upgrading the firmware of a device connected through a USB port to a computer system. This upgrading mode will work even if the station will not start up due to operating system issues, or even if you are unable to get into bootloader mode by holding T1 and T4 inward and pushing at the same time the power button. So, in order to be in DFU mode, connect your station directly to your PC without powering up.
In my case, the Windows installed correctly the driver required to be used with OpenTX companion application. In such a case, you will have the situation from the left in the device manager. If not, you will have the situation from the right. In the last case, you have two options to solve this problem. Impulse RC Driver Fixer or Zadik application. The links to both of them are placed in this video's discussion. As you see, there is a problem with this driver. Now execute Impulse RC. And in several moments, the new driver is installed. If in Zadig install window you do not see the driver, go to menu bar and select options. Here select list all devices. Now leave all other settings in the default state and click on the button labeled install driver or reinstall driver. I love the Zadig application due to the possibility of reinstalling the driver for the station when Windows installed a wrong driver. Having the station connected in DFU mode, the driver installed, the OpenTX companion installed and a radio profile correctly configured, Go to download, check for updates, press yes and choose a suitable location to download the firmware. Now you have the newest version of OpenTX and it is ready to be installed on your transmitter. So it is time to install the firmware. Click on Read Write, select Write Firmware to Radio, click on Load and choose the firmware file, the bin file you previously downloaded. Now in the end click on Write to TX. What is essential is that in the end you get the message file downloaded successful. Now go to check if your transmitter is working. If when flashing the bootloader and the OpenTX from the OpenTX companion application, you get in the end error command not correctly executed, as is presented in the second image, you have a problem. The message for a successful flashing operation in DFU mode is the first one, file downloaded successfully. This message means that read protection is enabled on your STM32 microcontroller placed inside the station. To solve this problem, please download the DFU Reset Tool. The link is in this video's description. Now unpack all the files to a suitable location. To go to the next step, your station must be connected in the DFU mode. Now go to the command line and execute the ResetDFU command file. 
If you get the message, device disconnects, erases flash and reset now, this means you unlock the station microcontroller read protection and now you can use the OpenTX companion to write the firmware without any problems. So, please do it. The same problem can be encountered when using the HTX flasher to write the firmware. If this time the error is as in this image, means that the read protection is enabled on your STM32 microcontroller from your station. So, use the DFU Reset tool to solve the problem as was previously presented. Now we go in the hardware mode. In this approach, you are required to open the radio. You have a link in the upper part of the video that will present all the steps. Now remove the CR1220 button battery cell from the main board for a while, let's say one minute, or even start the remote without battery. After that, power down the station and in the end put the battery back. Also, you can check that it is still measuring 3 volts, and if not, then replace it with a new one. This method works well in some cases after the SD card or firmware update. The last presented problem is given by this ribbon cable. If the main board cannot initiate and communicate with the multi-protocol unit, you'll get a brick transmitter. To unplug the ribbon cable, pull up these flaps from back to forward. which will lift the compression mechanism. Remove the soft flat ribbon cable from the other side in the same mode, but first remove this four screw. Please clean the cable silver contacts at both ends with alcohol in order to remove any dust particles. I use this alcohol specially designed for electric contact, but I'm sure that other type will also work. In the end, reinstall the cable properly and put the radio module back on.